Mehdi Jalierian is, uh, is in mechanical engineering and plumbing with environmental systems design in Chicago. So we're going to go really behind the scenes of buildings and tall buildings and uh, talk about systems that don't get talked about a whole lot. That's right. Mechanical engineering and plumbing, MEP, is, is what that means. Uh, and you're, one of your main talking points here is standardization of all of the uh, components of the systems that go into those. Could you explain what that is? Uh, standardization in the building where you have uh, very large uh, quantities of systems that need to be installed within the tall building. Uh, if you think about standardizing those components from a design standpoint and selection standpoint, what it does, it allows you to uh, have a very uh, systematic approach to installation, have a very uh, streamlined approach to commissioning, in, you know, testing them. You can do uh, the work on, on a por small portion of the building and, and have that repeated throughout. Uh, in addition to that, you'll be able to procure these products if they're standardized uh, in, in a more uh, economical way as a bulk item. The manufacturing team that's outside of the building boundary in the factory, they can manufacture these products in a much quicker process and, and more uh, economical way. So when standardization, in my opinion, is, is more of a sustainability uh, for the project. How has it been handled up to now? Because we're sitting here in the Jin Mao building, and we've got the Shanghai Tower going up across the street. Have those? Are there special components that are used in tall buildings like that, or how do you how do we acquire those? Uh, there are some special components that are generally required for tall buildings, especially on the pressure component of it. Uh, water being pumped to higher elevations create a, a water column pressure. As a result, the components that are uh, installed for that kind of system has to withstand that very high pressure. Uh, so uh, from a technical standpoint, those are resolved based on the height of the building, based on the design of the building, based on the configuration of the building. Uh, standardization of those components is, is something that is more holistic approach that the team is designing it has to really think about in a long-term approach. A, 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 uh, earlier process of the design, what we used to do, we, we take a design and we, we implement the available equipment into it and make a system out of it. Uh, today with taller and taller buildings, we need to think about those components to be specifically tailored to that particular project. So they're uh, readily installed, they go with the flow of the installation, they can be tested and commissioned very quickly and repeated throughout the height of the building so we can have a consistency and the quality that you require. And really until you stand next to one of these super tall buildings and get an idea of just how tall and massive they are, do you really start to get an idea of maybe some of the pressures that you're dealing with? What kind of specific components are we talking about that really are, are critical? Well, uh, in order for uh, uh, supply cooling to the building, you produce chill water at the base of the building generally, especially with those tall buildings because of the space is very limited and very valuable in the building. Most of them have a plant that's either adjacent to it or the basement or in the district kind of application. We take that water and pump it to the building all the way to the top. In order to do that, you're limited with the uh, maximum pressure that the equipments can withstand that are available for commercial application. There are a lot of equipment in the oil and mist industry that's uh, much higher pressure, but they're highly specialized systems that are not really suitable for commercial yet. Uh, taller and taller we get these buildings, the more critical this uh, element becomes, and you need to make sure that you're uh, accommodating those uh, efficiencies that are required both from distribution standpoint as well as the, uh, the temperature variation. Every time you go through heat exchanger system to break the pressure, you actually reduce some efficiency. So the more often you do that, by the time you get to the top of the building, your efficiency kind of diminishes. The fact that they have mechanical floors distributed through the buildings, you know, the John Hancock Center in Chicago comes to mind where, uh, because we've been through that, where they have mechanical systems on 45 and on 98, is that, uh, is that something that's worked with where you only pump water, say, so high, uh, can you catch a break that way, or is it necessary to pump water all the way to the top of a tall structure? I, it's not possible. Technically, it's not possible to do it in one second. You, you have to do it in, in a uh, sort of a controlled uh, heights that are suitable for equipment that's available in the market. 
Uh, for example, in Kingdom Tower that we're currently working on, it, we've actually worked very hard to exceed the limits of the manufacturer heat exchanger of commercial. We have two sets of heat distribution vertically, which is uh, basically pushing the limits. I think next step would require something to happen there technically from a manufacturing standpoint or product that are available in the industry on the uh, oil and gas side need to kind of percolate into the commercial application to be able to, to apply them. And the Kingdom Tower is the, what, 3,000? Uh, it's over a kilometer tall. Over a kilometer tall, so that's a huge yeah. engineering proposition uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. So we're still, there are still new components to be de designed and created for buildings like that, right? Uh, yes, yeah, certainly, and what we've done there, we've actually, uh, although the building is very tall, we've uh, tried to maintain the standardization in a way that, that when you get to the residential component, you're actually within a, a 20 story type uh, pressures that you're dealing with. So at the end user, you, you picture the building as being a series of smaller buildings stacked on top of one another uh, from the end user standpoint, but from the bulk of it from infrastructure and core and shell side of it, you need to accommodate that distribution. Tall buildings are like cities standing up on their and they're, and they're hugely intricate, so it's not like running down to Home Depot and say, I need three Correct. of these fittings. They're, they're very much custom, custom developed. Yeah. Um, the Shanghai Tower going up across the street, when you look at that, a, a tower like that, and it's, you know, you, it's, it's open to the air and you can see all of the structural components in there. What goes through your mind when you look at a, at a structure that huge? Well, I think the first thing that comes to my mind in a very tall building is the, uh, is the occupant safety. I think in any any development like this, any tall building, the first step needs to be really occupant safety. There are people in every building uh, uh, that needs to be, at some point in time, under emergency, evacuated properly without uh, harming them. So many of the ideas and development on the systems are really circling around the concept of making the occupant comfortable, not only during the operation, but also during emergency conditions. Has the industry had to play catch up in terms of components? Because in 15 years, we've gone from 1,300 foot buildings to 2,300 foot buildings. What kind of what kind of challenges have there been in, in keeping pace with that? I think most of the challenges I indicated is, is on the uh, vertical transportation. I, I, I've seen every every building that has uh, taken a next leap in the height. There's been a uh, an advancement or, or some improvement in the elevator system, be it from uh, technical aspects of it itself as, as a manufactured item, and also the application of it, how how you organize it, so where the people go to uh, sky lobbies and, and how they evacuate, how they get into the, the space. So I think I think every tall building sets next step of uh, what I call crowd control or occupant control. Matey Jalliarian, thanks for dropping by and seeing us in Shanghai. Thank you.